thank you for coming. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you. I know y'all could have been anywhere else in the world this morning, but you're here, so thank you very much. Tracy, everybody. Tracy, it's so good to see you, man. Thanks now, you, for having me. You were telling me in the green room, you're saying I'm not an iconic comedian yet. I don't think I think I'm just uh, standing on the shoulders of those who came before me. You know, my comedic heroes, Richard Pryor, Eddie Martin, and uh, George Garland, and Jackie Gleason, and all those people, just the comedy gods. You know, so I, I'm fortunate to have uh, seen these people work and perform. So I'm happy. I'm just uh, emulating mostly a person like my dad, who's super funny. Is that right? You grew up around funny people. Yeah, both sides of the family, super funny. And, and you know, in the hood, you know what I'm saying, in the ghetto, rather, you know what I'm saying, when we grow up, rather in poverty, anywhere, um, you know, not many things uh, make you happy. Comedy was one, Richard Pryor, you know, music mm -hmm. was another, Marvin Gaye, and then it's sex. <laughs> sex, you know, yeah. Sex. They're all There's good. no money there. We can't go to Hawaii and stuff like that, so <laughs> we make love to feel good, you know, and yeah. that's real talk. No, it's laugh, music, sex. In that order, or pain, pain, laugh, yeah, music, sex. You know, the pain is me not being able to get a job, mm -hmm. so my woman got to sex me up to make me just feel like a man, because so many doors been slammed in my face <laughs> that day. That day. So yeah, I think that's why we have a lot of babies so soon in the hood. You know what I'm saying? It's, mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, byproducts of just poverty and frustration. You know, we use sex as a sedative. It eases the pain of poverty. Right. You know, you broke, I'm broke. Let's go half on a baby. Right. And then there's the funny. You know, if you laughing, it keeps you from crying because you know the the hunger pains and all of that stuff. So that's what it is. So that's part of what drove me. You know what, what drives me. Yeah. At a very early age, you know, laughter is a great defense for everything yeah, that's happening. Absolutely. Um, growing up, though, did, did you watch TV and go, somebody does this? Somebody actually gets paid? Well, first, the, the first one I seen doing it was my daddy. Yeah. Jimmy Morgan. It's funny. He was Richard Pryor funny. You know what I mean? If... If I had an inkling of his talent, you know, I'd be awesome. I'm just a better businessman. But my daddy was the, he was, oh, he was bad. He's yeah. funny. Um, he'd make a whole projects come out and just listen to him. Right. Yeah, don't let him get on you, man. Don't let him jones on you, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've seen him make people cry, grown men cry. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just emulating him. And then later on, as I became a teen, then I was introduced to the, uh, you know, the Richard Pryors, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, Petey Wee Straws, you know, and all of that stuff, signifying monkey, and listening to those albums and, and seeing the wit and just the wit. I don't know where, just the insight, you know, being born with this insight, you know, and then to see Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy growing up in the 80s, you know, JJ had just left TV, so <laughs> Eddie was the only black dude on TV and he was wearing red pumas, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I identified, you know, before I even laughed at Eddie, I identified and related. So then the laughter, and then what inspired me, what, bro, what, you know, what, what, it was a straw that didn't break the camel's back. This straw sent the camel to the chiropractor is when I went there, I, I went to see Martin Lawrence at Def Jam. Yeah. And I was there in the room and I said, wow, he's doing the same thing I do and it's being done. You know, and that's when it really hit home with Def Jam. And four months later, I was on Def Jam. Is that right? Four yeah. months. Four months later. Before I started. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, it was. Uh, what was incredible was just trying to convince everybody around me that I was going to be a star. Mm -hmm. You know, I never told nobody I was going to be funny. I was already that. I was born that way, but I wanted to be a star. You had and, hunger for it. Yeah, there was some people around me that said, you know, UPS is hiring. But except for my ex-wife, Sabina, mm. she's the one that said pull the trigger. And she was the only one that had the right to say go get a job because we had three kids on welfare. But instead, she believed in me. So that's why I say sometimes it only take one person just to have believe in you. And that's you. But, you know, three kids. My and biggest fans, my yeah, boys at the time. Yeah. And I you have were, four now. You were starting... Comedy, so you have to be serious at that point. You can't be like, yeah, "Oh, serious. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna take a year or two, yeah. see what happens." You've you've got mouths to feed. You know? Yeah, I was aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I, I I knew what was at stake. I, I I approach it the same way I approach it now. I have nothing to lose. Is that right? Yeah, when it comes to comedy, man, I run you over like a truck and leave you dead in the street. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play that, man. Comedy, yeah. I'm comedy is my first wife. 
Now, when you that's fir- my love. first I get time you were jealous when I see other comedians fucking the shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody fucked her like Richard did. <laughs> he stuck his comedic dick in every orifice of her body. Right. Richard right. Pryor did. <laughs> and you don't know? Check the books. <laughs> nobody ever did it like him. I don't know. But you got to understand, he was born on the edge. He was born in a brothel. So yeah. imagine that pain. Imagine that. Seeing your moms and your aunts and all of that. You got to be super funny. I don't think I'm willing to go there. Can there be comedy? Can there be funny without pain first? Does pain got to be there? Sure. You can make fun of the joys mm-hmm. with our children. I don't think it's all. I think that's a myth that we only... You got to be just broken, and I think that's all a myth, you know what I'm saying, that we're mm-hmm. all drug addicts, and we all get drunk to be funny and all. No, I don't think that has anything to do with comedy, doing drugs and drinking and all that. I think that's all frat boy stuff. I think, you know, because of the John Belushi's and all the stuff that's tied into it, we think that. Right. No, but uh, Sinbad wasn't like that. You know, Bill Cosby never did all of that stuff. You know, tragedy. Is in everybody's life. We've all experienced tragedy, and what that, that's what comedy is. Comedy is nothing but tragedy turned inside out. The happy face, sad face, plaython. So that's what it is. But in order to make fun of that tragedy, you got to let the heal. You got to let it heal. You know, because we're all scarred. You see, remember that scene in Jaws when Quinn and them was down down deck and they was. That's what we do. We right. Look at this one, and I got and the funny stories. But right. at the time, it's bleeding. The cut is is it hurts, and you can't make fun of that. It's hurt you hurting. So give it time. Be patient. It'll come about, and that's what we have to learn. Be patient. Trey, tra- when when tragedy happens in your life, do you think later this will be material? Though, do you think not all, not all the time? Yeah, not all the time. I'm quite sure Bruce Lee didn't think the Chucks was going to come about in his life. Mm. But when it came, they were there. You know, there's things that sometimes come when it's supposed to come. Yeah. You know, and it can be used as tools. Where's the first time you got up doing stand-up? First time on stage? I want to say 1968, about four in the morning when my mother's water broke. <laughs> <laughs> and now appearing. <laughs> that's what it was. The water broke, that's what yeah. it was. But the first time professionally, I want to say in 1990, 1991, yeah. Def Jam came on. Something came over me and I just snapped. I had lost all my friends to the drug game. My dad died in 1987 to AIDS. And something snapped. And I just started doing comedy all around the hood. I was always funny. But I just started doing comedy, though. At my boy's house in front of his friends. You know, I'm seeing Def Jam. I'm seeing In Living Color. All these vehicles for urban stand-up was out there. So it was a culture. And I fit right in. Then one day, um, my boy Raul... He took me to Def Jam because he was an intern over at with Russell Simmons. And me, him, and my brother was sitting up in the balconies and Martin came out and did his thing. You knew then. It was like looking into your own future when yeah. you're looking at Martin. Yeah. That's changed like my scene. life. Yeah, it's like a scene from a movie where suddenly a character realizes his own future. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I was going to be there. Yeah. Changed my kid's life. And Martin, at that point, had everything going. He had stand-up, my OG. TV. My OG. Yeah. I just saw him a couple of uh, weeks, a couple of days ago at the FX of Fronts, and I'm, 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 I'm not tearing because not because I feel sad because I'm happy. Yeah, because I know this opportunity came about, and this man named Martin Lawrence gave me a shot, and the Brown Brothers over at Uptown Comedy Club in Harlem, they gave me a shot. But Martin, he put he 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 let me eat at his table, and it wasn't because he liked me; it's because he thought I was funny. So he said, "Come eat at my table on my show," and he put me in front of this national audience, and he gave me an opportunity, and he told me things, man, and um, I'll never for- I'll I'll never forget it. And I'll always be thankful to Martin Lawrence for that. He gave me an opportunity. Well, he gave you the opportunity, but those hustle man things were so damn yeah, funny. I mean, I you, wouldn't have been on the show if I wasn't funny. Right. It wasn't because he liked me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. This ain't show friendship. This show business. So I had to bring the product, too. Yeah. But he gave me that opportunity. To, he didn't have to do that. So, no, that's certain- I try to provide that for young stand-ups that are theme worthy to do that I'm not just you know I'm, I'm with the you know I see talent you know I recognize good character and that's what you have to have you can't just have talent 
You know, you got to have that character. My, you know, Mike Tyson had a lot of talent. You know what I'm saying? But Ali had that character. You know, that character. And that's what I'm, I look for nowadays in show business. Some people character. I just think that sometimes the standards get so low. You know, we're making it so easy. You know, I, I look at American Idol, nothing against American Idol, but that never happened for, that never happened for Aretha Franklin. In my philosophy, you know, to get to the top, you got to dig a hole. You know what I'm saying? You don't get to the top starting at the top. You're already on TV. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that goes for all the young people that's working in Red Lobsters and all of that stuff. Right. Work on. Keep at your craft. Don't quit. As long as you're doing what you love to do, you've already made it. Money well, don't money don't measure that. Yeah, I mean the the fact that even if I wasn't rich and famous, I'd still be funny. Right. That's a gift he gave me to get past my brother being crippled, my mother and my father separating, then the divorcing, my father's death, and all the other tragic things in our lives. That's why he gave us a sense of humor. Never let it go. When you take life so serious, you'll never get out alive. So you think about all the things that people are going through in this room right now. At some point, man, try to just look at it and laugh. You know, even when you have a death in the family, try to remember the good, funny things. You know, you're going to grieve, but allow yourself a certain amount. Yoko Ono gave herself seven days to grieve because life goes on and you got to get back in it. You got to get back in it, mama. This is all. This is all. Thank you. But. This is all really important to you. What some people just say is humor or light. To you, it's like a philosophy that you have well, to live, live by. It. Yeah. You got to live it. Bruce Lee lived it. Mm. You got to live it. If I wasn't doing this, I'd be dead. I know why he brought me here. I know why I'm here. I see the hurt and the pain in the world. Somebody got to make him laugh. And but we got to laugh at all of that. That's why Archie Bunker was here. And that's the thing I have with social media sometimes. Because we just all opinionated and sensitive, super sensitive. But Archie Bunker, that's why we made fun of it. We used to be able to make fun of our ills and our racism and our sexism and all of that stuff. Archie Bunker, George Jefferson, all those things. But now everybody's just super, you know, politically correct now. And it's like, I think it's killing comedy. Well, like you, well, you talked about this, the corner stuff, uh, you know, the Joneses and all that. That had to be the thing where that's my social media right there, on right? The corner. <laughs> yeah, but I when, know everything going on in the community, standing right on the corner. <laughs> right, it's true. I'm old school with it. Yeah, I need to get on old computer, know where homeboy doing down a block. She just told me. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Social media. <laughs> See, it's funny. Yeah. But you had to, you know, when you're doing the Joneses and stuff, you, you have to make the person that you're even busting on laugh as well. That's, that's where I get it. Yeah. Because things can get really volatile and the, the dynamics are different on the streets. Yeah. If, you know, it got to be something that we all can laugh at. And I, ne I never forgot those fundamentals. I took all of those instincts with me and put them on stage. Yeah. That's what makes it homegrown. You know what I'm saying? My motivation for being funny, you want to know what that was? Yeah. The girls. Why you think we all, everybody talk this artistic crap? Man, it's about the ladies, man. You make the ladies laugh, man. Oh, you got the ladies. They turned into a business later, but when I was in high school, I, I got the girls because I made them laugh. Women no funny. Women no funny from the premise. Guys just, they laugh when they see the girl. Well, you make the ladies laugh. Ladies are emotional. They got the world on their shoulders. They take care of me, you, the kids, the house, everything. They got they burden with all of that emotion stuff. So to make her laugh, she love you already. She, you not you might not get the first base with her, but she gonna be what Trey said. He's so stupid every time he come around. He make me laugh. Where he at? Stupid ass. His stupid ass. Where he at? And that's what it was. You know what I'm saying? The girls want to be around you. You know, especially you can sing. I can sing. You know what I'm saying? Don't go changing. See, I got the girls. See, the guys are like this with the ego. I'm funny. Man. <laughs> I can sing Billy Joe again. You know? <laughs> that was never laugh at me, huh? Yeah. Huh? You know, that's that was is. a surprise, Billy Joel, that you dropped out. No mm. one saw that coming. No. no. <laughs> I sing. I sing. Person without a song to sing is a very sad person, mm. even if it's in the shower. Now, when you decide it, okay, I'm going into stand up, you do your first set, how'd that go over? Do you get the same kind of laughs Let that me you think expected? Back to it. Yeah. My very first set. Um, probably got some laughter, but that was enough. I got just enough. I don't remember if it was ah or nothing like yeah. that. But to make strangers laugh, that was enough. That was like, okay, I got this. 
and to be in a certain environment and make people laugh with the microphone. I had never did that. I was off the corner. But when it worked, I said, okay, I got this. And then I just got better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, for to go in four months. It's like learning your, it's like learning your, your, your instrument, your body. Mm-hmm. It's like women know how to walk. They learn their instrument. She know if she got hips, and she know when she walks, she got her walk. <laughs> All women got their walk. <laughs> they know how to attract the man. That's they true. know how to use their instrument. They know the assets and all of that. They know their smiles and all that stuff. They know the same thing with comedy. Same thing with comedy. I had to learn my instrument. And then when I got to Saturday Night Live, that's a university for all different kinds of funny. Yeah. All different kinds of funny. So you learn even more. You get good. How How was that audition for you? Because everyone talks about how difficult the audition it was, uh, is. It was frightening. Yeah. Because I knew the stakes. I had a wife and three kids. And I knew if I nailed this... It could change their lives. So I went towards it. My attitude was, I ain't got nothing to lose, man. But I got everything to gain. And before I left the house that day, I looked at my family. And nothing was different. They loved me regardless. I ain't even got to be funny with them. They love daddy regardless. And my oldest son and my wife gave me a kiss. She said, go get the, go get it. Then I remember as the door was closing, my oldest son said, um... He said, break a leg, Dad. But it wasn't no big thing. And then I just went and did what I did. And I got a call back. Maybe out of what? 2,000 people nationwide, some stuff like that. And I just fortunate. And I was a hand of God working with me on that one, man. Comedy. Comedy. She's the greatest. You hadn't even been doing comedy that long by the time you... Oh, uh, by the time I got that, so maybe two years. Uh, two years. Two and a half years. Two years and you're standing there in front uh, of Four months out of the workshop, I was on TV doing seven minutes to stand up on Def Jam. Six months after that, I was on Martin. No, uh, after Def Jam, five months after, a uh, month after Def Jam, I was casted, my first TV show in the Uptown Comedy Club. I did that. I was on there for a year and then I was on the Martin show. It was incredibly fast. And after the Martin show, I got Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Seven years and then I had my own TV show on NBC. I filled the Jerry Seinfeld slot. And then after that, I had Saturday Night Live for seven years. No, I had Saturday Night Live. Then I had my own TV show. And then I 30 Rock for seven years. And I had my own TV show again on FXX. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. The uh, uh, Going back to that, when you meet Lauren Michaels and you know... He's got the keys to the kingdom. This is going to make a difference in your family's life. This I wasn't is, thinking like that, though. Yeah. What I was thinking about was um, when I first got the show. Yeah. When I first yourself. got the show, um, my dad had went to Vietnam. He was drafted at 17. Came back a junkie. Really messed up in the head. And he hadn't laughed. He was shell-shocked. He was just a zombie. Until one night in 1975... Saturday night had came on Saturday Night Live and I never seen my father laugh so hard so when I got the role on Saturday Night Live the first thing I said to uh, Lauren Michaels thanks for making my dad laugh and he said chill on my shit thank you it's okay (laughs) and I said no you don't understand my dad died in 1987 my dad died now I'm a cast member Mm. So all of that was that was going on, the emotion of that, plus uh, looking at the paycheck every week. You know, I went from... (coughs) 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 My sinuses are bad now. I went from uh, getting maybe uh, $200 a show doing stand-up to $9,000 a week. That was my first, the first year of Saturday Night Live, $9,9500. And that was awesome, man. My first check, I moved my family out of poverty. First check. Yeah. We're out. We was gone. Yeah. First check. But you never left the Bronx. No. No. Yeah. First check, I think I bought a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Second check, I that, you it was that truck. Okay. Yeah, that was all right. It yeah. was fine. That's just fine. <laughs> Filled that truck up with all your you stuff. Expedition. I seen that expedition. <laughs> Probably go wait. They ain't gonna die. They got food upstairs. Yeah. Hurry up and get the wick check out the mail. <laughs> <laughs> that wick check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Remember> wick. <laughs> 
We stopped eating Spice Ham. <laughs> Is that right? Remember Spice Ham was the joint in the ghetto? <laughs> then we get we get muddy, we get uppity. <laughs> we start getting boar's head. <laughs> you make sure they slice it thin. <laughs> in the suburbs, people, you know, they get cold cuts. They say, uh, go get a half a pound of bologna. In the hood, we say, tell them give you three dollars worth. <laughs> three dollars worth. <laughs> tell them slice it thin. What? You make sure he washes hands. <laughs> That's where I'm from. Yeah. And that's still there. It's still with Never you. goes away. Yeah. It's my life. Once you lose your memory, you done lost your mind. Mm. I don't care how much money you got. You done lost your mind. People lose their memory. They forget where they from so it doesn't keep them humble. I don't care how much money I got. I still got to work. I got people working for me. So even if I'm not hungry, I still got mouths to feed. Because my kids keep going in and out that refrigerator. <laughs> the same thing is in there. <laughs> I keep the fill because they eat. Yeah. Three boys. No, it's boar's head now. I just want now. them to have. Yeah, it's boar's <laughs> head. I just want them to have. You know, when I, when I died, when my father died, I remember we had to go around the projects and with a collection just to bury him. When I die, I want to leave my kids gifts. I don't want nobody taking uh ah, no. So I'm smart with my money now. But that was a learned thing because I went into debt maybe uh right after the Tracy Morgan show, $1.2 yeah. $1. million because I didn't know about money. That's a learned behavior for us. I'm not Paris Hilton. I'm not heir to no chain of hotels. I wasn't born with no silver spoon. Broke. But it was cool because everybody in the neighborhood was broke. So I had to learn how to have money. How you learn? It's like love. How you learn what love is? When you lose it. How you know if it's love, Trey? Did it hurt when you lost it? Yeah, it was love. You lost it. Learn how to hold on to it. Same thing for you, ladies. Now, hold on to your love, man. You know, hold we're talking. Stop listening to everybody. Beyonce. <laughs> to the left, to the left, right. If you take all the Stills Crossing Nas songs and put them in a list, to take all her songs, put them in a list, yeah. she got three messages. Leave your man, leave your man, leave your man. But it's easy for you to say that. You got Jay-Z. <laughs> my woman need me. I need my woman. <laughs> uh, we're talking about spending... Oh, no, I love Beyonce. Okay. We're, we're talking about spending money, but I saw you on a TV show called Tanked, where you had a shark tank as big as this room yeah. in your house. 4,000 gallons. <laughs> I love sharks, man. I've always been into marine life. My bi I just recently found out my biological father's name is Jacques Cousteau, you know? <laughs> I'm Tracy Cousteau, you know? So I love animals. I love marine life because it's majestic. My sharks are majestic. When I don't yeah. want to watch the crap on TV sometimes, I just go down to my basement and look at that shark world. And there's all kinds of stuff happening in there. Most people on the planet don't even know these animals exist with us. Right. So I'm going to save a little piece of it. So you've got sharks living in your house. Yeah, in my basement. And you have to say to the kids, don't swim. No, I mean, it's, 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 it's um, no, no. I, <laughs> they, don't, they will never do that. But, you know, my nieces, my nephews come over and it's a big shank talk, a truck tank and they swim in. And, you know, and it's like an aquarium. I got an octopus, big octopus upstairs in the second living room. And <laughs> it's just really pretty. And the people from Tank spent a lot of money putting these, this stuff in. And I just take care of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you love that, though. That's... I love my animals. Yeah. All right, Saturday Night Live, I've talked to a lot of people who've done the show. Half say it was the best experience of their life. The other half says it was the worst experience of their life. Most people say you're, you're constantly battling to get sketches. I don't care about sketches. that stuff, man. That, yeah. was, that was a piece of cake, and it was beautiful to me. Yeah. I, I'm for the hood, man. Most people say it was the worst thing of my life. You crazy. To me, you crazy. Yeah, you ain't never been on food stamps and all that crazy stuff, man. You ain't never had gunshots under your window. That was the worst time of my life. Mm -hmm. Hearing that, see, I saw my first murder at like eight. I see my get they they cap twisted at eight. So sad and alive. I don't care. I was going. I was good. Yeah, I was good. You know, anything worth having is worth fighting for. No pain, no gain. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I approached it. No pain, no gain. I seen that. I know where I come from. Humble, humble, humble beginnings. So I'm not going to bad mouth Saturday Night Live that provided me. This world, this country has provided me a lot. You know, provided me a lot. So I can't be hating. And I'm an American. I'm here. You know, this is my country. And it's provided me a lot. So Saturday Night Live gave me that same opportunity to change my kids' world around. Made me a millionaire. 
help a brother turn a dollar into fifteen cent into a dollar. You know what I'm saying? That's what I. That's how I looked at it. That's real. That's real. So I give it all. I'm giving it all I got. When I die, I'm be a shell of a man like Richard Pryor because I gave y'all everything I had, man. I always kept it honest with y'all. Richard kept it honest with us, man. Even when he set himself on fire, man, he made fun of it. So that's real. Cast members, even though you were that fast, they welcomed Maybe you. Maybe it was a bad experience for some yeah. cast members. Yeah. I wasn't happy every week. No, I wasn't. Because, you know, it's so competitive. You're not going to be in every show. But look at the opportunity. It gave me to turn it into other things. You know what I'm saying? And I met beautiful people. I met beautiful people. I'm never going to vilify that. It's like me vilifying my, my high school. I love my high school. Oh, I love wearing my jersey and my jacket. I'm proud to be at, from DWC, DWC. Proud of it. No, man. That was my high school, man. SNL, baby. One of the funniest people in my generation. Well, you also met somebody there that, again, changed Some your life. Some people are used to giving it, letting it be handed to them. Right. Down there, you, if you on Saturday Night Live, you're probably one of the funniest people in your generation. You got to go hard. I was throwing elbows, man. <laughs> At some point, your fangs got to come down. You got to begin to feed. I know you're a reluctant vampire. <laughs> I know you're reluctant, but baby, you're going to die if you don't feed. <laughs> Look, there's a couple in the park walking a little dog. Let's go eat them. <laughs> Let's go suck their blood. Well, I don't want to, but you have to. You have to. <laughs> Hypnotized. Yeah, truer words. Uh, Trey, it's... <laughs> It's great advice for young people, you know? It's okay to be aggressive, but yeah. you don't have to be an asshole. Yeah. You don't have to take advantage of people. You don't have to be mean. You can uh, you can, you can, can uh, be good about it. You can be professional about it. But I was thinking because you got there so quick, did everybody feel like all oh, this guy's I didn't get there so quick. Yeah. Like Took me lifetimes. Years. You don't know what I've been through in the last life. Yeah. I don't look at it like I got there quick, no. No, this is probably my last cycle. I don't know. That's why I have the insight that I have. Maybe this is my cycle, my last one. I don't know. So you you, know. you're actually believing in past lives. Sometimes the lessons are important. Sometimes yeah. you got to come back. You got to learn your lessons, man. I don't care if you're 100 years old. This might only be your second cycle. That's why we make so many mistakes. And then there's those who don't make, they make less and less. There's sometimes things doing on you with the knowledge like Def Jam with me and all of that. And sometimes things dawn on you. Ever had things dawn on you? You've been here before. Saw it before. It's enlightenment. It's not enough for me to just be funny. Richard Pryor said something. If, he, if I'm going to be on stage for an hour or two, I got to say something. Got to talk about the sexism. Got to talk about the racism. Got to talk about the bullshit. Got to say something. Maybe I'll change somebody's mind. Maybe I'll touch somebody's psyche or somebody's heart. Maybe. Maybe. It's not enough to just be funny. We got to change the world, man. Don't take a million people. Just take one person with nothing to lose. I really don't. I want to leave something for my kids, man. I got to leave something for them, man. I want, when, they, when, 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 they, when, they, when they think back on me, man, I'm gonna say, I want them to say what I say about my dad. He was, he was hot shot, man. He had white dudes in the house. He had f white friends. He had no, no inferiority complex. He was a cool dude, man. It was Jimmy, man. And he used to always tell me, man, in the foxhole, man, everybody's the same color, man. I know how I got my name. Him, when he was drafted. <clears throat> him and a young Irish dude named Tracy. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> They want plane. They want a plane. Excuse me. I'm going to Vietnam. Scared to death. Young boys. And then got there two days later. Tracy had stepped on a landmine, blown to pieces. Father gave me his name. Your father means a lot to you, Trey. <coughs> He's always right there in every story. <coughs> My sinuses. Yeah. My mother means a lot too. My parents do. Because when my father couldn't do the things, my mom was there. She didn't always make the right decisions because she was young. Sort of limited. But she kept me warm. And she kept me fed. 
And in her defense, man, she did the best she could. Kept us on the straight path, my mom. So I, my mom gets more than most of the credit. Me don't get along, and we may be estranged, but I, my mom's know I love her. That's always going to be there. Maybe in the next life, me and her get along just fine. I tell that to my lady sometimes, man. We Maybe in the last life, we were pure enemies. But in this life, we we getting it together. That's why we do it so much. <laughs> and Scorpio, I need that shit all the time, B. I need it all the time, man. It eases my nerves, man, before I go on stage. <laughs> You are Most honest. of the time we do it standing up in the dressing room. <laughs> standing up. <laughs> we'll talk. Man, not like one mind. Yeah. That's God's greatest creation. You gotta you gotta be a pure genius to come up with the concept of titties. <laughs> pure genius. Yeah. I don't say boobs. No. No, you don't say that. Nah, I say titties, man. <laughs> <laughs> My like boob is like a retarded child. Right? <laughs> That's a boob. Man. Ain't nothing like titties. Man. Right. Look, see, I got her. She's open. <laughs> she's she never going to forget me. No, she won't. Hey, she crazy. <laughs> it's a titties. That's what it used to be back in the days. <laughs> Ain't nothing like woman. <laughs> it's all about compatibility. Sure. They look at us. See, I, uh, is, are we compatible? Let me see his hand. Let me, they, they measure us. They size us up. She looking at me like now, look. <laughs> she gonna mess around and get pregnant. I'm yeah. telling you, boy. Yeah. I'm a veteran. I don't pull out, you know what I mean? No, you don't pull out at no. all. Yeah. I'm old school. Yeah, I'm, yeah, old my school. junk is like prison. When I come in, I come in. I'm <laughs> doing life, you know? I don't believe in wearing no condoms, man. No. If you ain't willing to die for it, you really didn't want it. Right. <laughs> you didn't want it. <laughs> The commitment is there then, Trey. All right, look, I rocked them, look. Yeah. What a way to start your morning on. It is. You have the front row flush. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you notice there's all about. women in the front row. That's, that's when you really know you're nice. funny. Yeah. The prettiest, I, I, that's when you know you're funny. When you make the pretty girls in the front row laugh so hard, they yeah. fart. They fart. <laughs> that's when you funny. It smell like Chanel and poop in that area. <laughs> Chanel and poop, yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> She laughed back there. She, 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 she had to cross off. She said, oh, I don't be pooping. Man. I don't fart. Trey, uh, Trey treats every place like it's the Playboy Club. That's what Everywhere it is. you go. Don't worry about the millions of people. Just worry about the people in this room. Yeah. Do comedy like you talking to the guys, the six guys at, the, at your house. Chris Farley told me that. My second year, or when he hosted, he said, Don't worry about TV land. They make the people in this room laugh. That's infectious. It'll get to them. Do comedy like you doing it for the six people in your living room that you always did it for. Mm. And that's what it's about, man. Richard Pryor, it was just a funny conversation. I don't do material, man. I'm conversating, man. When you, when Richard talked to us, didn't he talk to us? Wasn't it a funny conversation? And you in your mind, you'd be like, it's good, Rich. You know, <laughs> and that's what I want. When I'm on stage, I don't, I, yeah. I'm trying to touch you, man. Well, you got to speak. You go to church and say, hi, and they have, and I'm trying to get, go there. I want the same effect as that preacher got. The Holy Ghost and all that. I want that. I want people laughing where they move. I don't want to tickle nobody. She's a grown-ass woman. She don't want to be tickled. She want to laugh. <laughs> Man, hit him in the gut. <laughs> my comedy is based in reality. If I had to describe my comedy as temporary, it's, 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 you know, it's a contemporary wit. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I stab the monster, but I don't cut too deep because I know we need the monster. The truth. People are so uncomfortable with the truth now, and I love to dwell in those areas that make you uncomfortable. I was talking about girls farting just now. All of them got uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about how sexy they are, and they walk. So they get uncomfortable because they're not used to that. we so scared of them now. They're not used to that. And she need to hear that. Yeah, Baby, I, I like your hair. I don't think anybody's job, been comfortable man. here in a long time, Jason. I don't need that. I'm not trying to come at you. But sometimes <laughs> a lady just need to, they go all out to get their hair done and all that stuff. They get up at, they got to be to work at nine. They get up at four in the morning to get ready. <laughs> Who you think they doing that for? <laughs> Us. So compliment them. But they get all this energy coming at them every day from creeps. 
My hands ain't sweaty. Feel that. Let me say. My hands are soft. Oh, you yeah, know why my soft. hands are soft? Why is that? Because all I do is touch women and count money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look for no heavy boxes. Well, that, uh, I don't look for heavy way. boxes. I touch women and count money. Fred, you know, I like touching the woman. That's the that's got to be the name of the next with a woman book. when you go home tonight. Paint her toenails. <laughs> do things like that. Just paint her toenails. Paint her toenails. You want her pillow talk? Paint her toenails. Got to get close to her. Make her laugh. The first the women know that they. You ask a woman what's the first thing she love in a man. You know what she's saying? Sense of humor. I thank God I'm like a world premiere comedian. <laughs> Comedians get all the ladies <laughs> And then they hate you Right Cause they know your heart is in comedy mm -hmm. That's She's your first, first wife Yeah She was with me When I was in heaven Before I even got here I was making angels laugh And when I leave here I'm going back And I'm gonna make big men laugh When I get up there in heaven They gonna open up the, the ropes And God probably gonna slap me on the ass Good job Blah. Good job Good job <laughs> Hold on, hold on. They coming with me. <laughs> Jesus! Is Abraham back there? <laughs> that remote control back there? <laughs> sure! You know, arguing with Jesus. You know. God looking for the, blue, the, the blueprints for titties. What are these blue? <laughs> Noah, have you seen his blueprints? <laughs> looking for the blueprints. The hips. Shaka Khan hips, you know? Lips and hips. Quite a bit of confidence about the spiritual, about your spiritual. Because I'm so. connected. That's yeah. what I'm dealing with. I could be on a spirit on a physical level. Yeah. But then what's that? I'm just on a physical level. I like to deal in the spirits, man. They give me solace. When I'm dealing on that level, I can't be broke. Because my spirits are high, and when you're doing stand up at this level, your spirits got to be high. You got to lift them up. I know it's hard. Because so many people around you every day bring you down. Hey, what's up, baby? You know my aunt died? <laughs> That's intentional. Sorry about your aunt, but I got to go. <laughs> that goes for relatives, family, and all of that. You got to get close to them. Because it's getting dark out here. Get close to them. I get close to God in a tight situation. You think it's me making 5,000 people in the arena laugh? Just me? Saying one thing into a microphone, making 5,000 people laugh in unison. That's the hand of God. He's just using me as a vehicle. He's going from there through me into the audience. That's how I've always seen it. I look at comedy in circles, bubbles. Some people's bricks, hard, slam on people because they got the mic, hurt them. Nah, comedy is fun, it's bubbly. What's the first three letters in the word comedy? And funny, F-U-N. What does that spell? Fun. So you got fun. When they see you having fun, they have fun. You're not going to get in a cab with a cab driver who's shaking at the wheel. You're going to not stop the cab. Let me get out. <laughs> confidence. You're not going to get on top of a woman and your arm is shaking. No, you want confidence. Come here. Turn around. Plow. Come here. They like that shit. Ooh, ah. Oh. Slap them on the ass. Plow. Ooh, ah. Oh. Turn around. Control. Confidence. They see me on stage and they having fun. Oh, he got this. I paid money for this ticket. He got us. That's what it is. I, I you know, I never made the connection that uh, that F U N started funny. I never really figured out the root word and why of fun. Nye? Yeah. Don't that sound negative? <laughs> nye? Negative? <laughs> it's amazing have fun. insight. It's amazing. Then you're insight. funnier. Have fun. Then you're funnier. You know, um, back to Saturday Night Live. He said that's incredible insight. Yeah. Third eye. Yeah, it is, third Sometime eye. Sometimes it gets you in trouble. It could be a blessing and a curse. But I'm sorry, it ain't going to close now. Once the genie is out of the bottle, I ain't going back in. Some of us have insight, but we refuse to see it because with insight, you can look inside somebody you love really much, a lot, and see some really dirty shit. And you don't want to see that. I'm being denial. I'm going to dump down for my family. Saturday Night Live. Uh, you met Tina Fey mm -hmm. there. And that was another life Or she met me. Or she met you. I was there three years before. Yeah. But did you guys connect right away? I no. mean, did you realize? No. We yeah. hang out. We don't hang out now. It's a middle-aged white woman. What's she going to hang around me for? <laughs> she got a husband. I'm a lover. You know what I'm saying? No. 
We have nothing in common besides comedy, and that's where we connected. We were both on Saturday Night Live. She was doing her thing, and then at some point, she said he could be a funny Star Jones. He could be a funny Burt from Nike, um, from uh, Judge Judy, and that's how that started. Then after the Tracy Morgan TV show. Uh, didn't make it like that. Then she was doing a TV show based on backstage. She had partied with me at the at the after parties and saw how fun that was with Tracy. She wanted to introduce that to the world, and she did. She uh, she heard my voice. You were the first person that she cast in that show, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. Any Let idea that that it would be as big as it was? None. I don't think we was looking for that. I think we was just looking to make good TV and have fun. And that's what it was. And it just translated to the audience. And when we came on in their living rooms, when they did the boop and had us on, you know, we thank you guys for that. They enjoyed seeing these crazy people in their lives. We never made fun of the show. We made fun of these characters in their crazy lives. And all the cast, Jack, Jane, Judah, Grizz, everybody, Alec, everybody, it was just like we... It was perfect. It was like the stars and the moon just lined up and everybody knew they roles and we were that. So to have writers like John Regi and Don Scardillo and all these people to know our voices and then we found the show. Because just because it is doesn't, doesn't mean the show is complete. You have to find that show. So everybody's still fine tuning their characters and then it just blended. And we lasted seven years. We did seven years. Then Tina Fey became a mom. She had two daughters and TV, as you guys know, 14 hours a day. And she wanted to spend more time with her, her daughter. So, you know, we were all with her and supported, you know. And so we were fine. You know, uh, we don't miss the TV show because we see it on syndication. But um, what you do miss is the people that you saw for seven years, the grips, the craft services. You miss those people because you spend so much time with them, more time than you spend with your own family. So that's what you miss most of all. And I think that show did a lot to cement you with a certain audience that maybe... Well, I was Emmy nominated for yeah. that. Yeah. So that was a really good moment. Good times. And a lot of the people who come out to see you stand up, a lot of them... Sometimes they don't think yeah. outside the box. Sometimes they may look for Tracy Jordan, Tina Fey, and all of those people. But what you're getting when you come see me do stand up is my world. Mm. You know, and it's not pretty like that. I'll make it funny. I'll, I'll put it so where you can understand. Because when I when I'm doing stand up, I'm more of a visual stand up. I'll paint a picture in your mind, and you'll see it. Now you can see it one of two ways. You know, what I'm saying you can laugh about it, or you can feel bad about it. That's on you. You know, it's how you see it. If you give a child finger paint. In, in kindergarten and you let them do their thing now you're going to look at that finger that painting one or two ways you're going to say oh he made a mess or you're going to say this is the mind of a child a genius that's masterpiece but it's all on you it's all on your intent why are you coming to the show Are you do you want to laugh or are you coming to judge and I just think nowadays we hold comedians to the same standards as school teachers and the president you can't do that this is comedy we supposed to make fun of no matter our fears, our, our angers, our, all of that. We supposed to com That's what comedians do. But now everyone on in social media is just it's an it's just information speedway. A lot of people come there and the camera phone, so they take everything out of its context, and it becomes like a witch hunt. You've been the center like that before. Yeah, I, 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 I've been there. But um, you know, um, if, I feel like this. If you don't like comedy, just stay home and make it a blockbuster night. <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, comedy, comedy clubs, comedy concerts, that's off limit. That's sacred ground. That's a place for all of us to come and let our hair down. Because you don't know, out of all those people, you might save somebody's life. You don't know who's out there in the audience ready to go home and burn their whole fucking family down in the house. But when you say, give me that knife, laugh at this, they realize I'm not the only one. Why do you think people get depressed? Because they think they're the only one. You ain't the only one. Per, per, you ain't the only person trying to lose weight. You not. But there's nobody out there saying that. You know, there's nobody out there saying that. You ain't the only one trying to quit smoking. You ain't the only one. You ain't the only one going through problems. You ain't the only one with ED and all of that crazy shit. It's, it's real. <laughs> you ain't the only one. You ain't the only one. You ain't. You ain't the only one to feel bad about things. I touched her. Sitting in the front row, she started crying because she felt my pain. She been there. That's what it's about. Making people laugh is temporary. It's transferable. Making people care, that's forever. We still care about Richard Pryor, and he's gone. So, that's what it's about. 
So what do you do when people don't get it or say you what should you be do? using those what words? What do you do? I don't know. You tell me. What do yeah. you do? You move on. You got to move on. It's life. Some people ain't never going to get it. If you, if you gave it to them, they still ain't going to get it. <laughs> and what are they supposed to get? Love. What did John Lennon say? All we need was what? Love. That's what comedy is. I ain't coming here to hurt nobody. Came to make people laugh and think and, and love, and we need more of that in the world. I figure this is where people say the world is going to end. No, it ain't going nowhere. Trust me. He just moving. The demon spirits are just moving, but God got this. When it, you got love, you got love, you got love, then we ain't going nowhere. When there ain't no more love, lights out. You, On a small planet. Tracy, you do think. Of clay. You, you do think that there's demon spirits out there that sure, move around? I told just, you I'm in the spirit world. Yeah. Remember Young Guns? Mm-hmm. We're in the spirit world, asshole. Remember when we took the <laughs> yeah. mushrooms and stuff? I'm right. in the spirit world, asshole. Yeah. I'm in the spirit world, man. That's it. You, 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 you're moving on a different plateau then. You know, you're moving on a different plateau, man. Yeah, if you believe in God, you better believe in the devil. He's there. He's a bad. That's his favorite trick. Making you think he didn't exist. But he's mighty. You know, but God is almighty. Only he could take me from the projects to... You know, Holly, Hollis to Hollywood, but is he good? You know what I mean? <laughs> Holly, Holly, you know, you can move a mountain, you know what I mean? You might only do it one spoonful at a time, but you can move a mountain. <laughs> Depends on how much time you got. People ask me that all the time. So how much time do you have, Tracy? I got 45 years if you got the time to listen. It's all about my memory, like I said. If I can remember it, I can make it funny. Uh, Tracy, I, I promised some of these people they could ask some do it. questions as well. There's Yo, a microphone listen, over here. You can grab back. Shelby. Ask me whatever you want to ask me. Over here, this young lady. Sexy chocolate. <laughs> well, first, I really want to say thank you. I mean, this is amazing. You really are insightful. And well, just you. thank you so no, much. Good you. stuff. No, thank truly. Um, and I'm, we're huge, huge 30 Rock fans. My girlfriend, Jamie. And um, we like just, you're so funny. And even your face is just so funny. But here today, you're like so serious. Like, like I mean, but professional also. And just really yeah. like serious. So like, how do you see yourself? Because I mean, they're so strong in equal measure. Like when you're funny, it's so, like the spectrum is so wide. Like, how do you see yourself for to come out um, there's three egos in the world is how people see you how you see people and how you see yourself you ask me about how I see myself and that's the most important how you see yourself I'm beautiful <laughs> I'm beautiful and I'm versatile you know what I'm saying I tell people you know how you see me that's how you see me I can't change that you can never change anyone's opinion of you so why waste your time how you feel about you is what's important I feel great I feel good. I was my choice. I know I got a choice. When I wake up in the morning, I could be miserable. I could feel good. I could feel good. I choose to feel good. So it's not a stretch when I'm being funny at the Nick games. And that's me, man. If I'm feeling bad, trust me, I'm going to feel bad. And you will know it. So people ask me, how you feel today? Sometimes up, sometimes down. I hope you catch me on the up joint. You know what I'm saying? But when I'm down, I feel down. Mary J. Blige told me that. When you're feeling down, feel down. Feel down. And all that negative energy, it would di all disappear, and you'll be at peace with yourself. All right, next you'll question. Be at peace with yourself. To thyself, stay true. When you're feeling down, you're just feeling down. It's one of them days. It's okay to have the blues. It's okay to have the blues. Having the blues is healthy sometimes. Go jump in the shower. <laughs> Wash your hair. Scratch it out your hair. But have the blues sometimes. You want to listen to Sade all day. That's what I'm feeling today. But don't start tricking yourself. Don't fool yourself. Sometimes you want to feel down. Deal with it. Got time. Make you strong. Time for one more question. Yes, over here. Thanks. Uh, did you ever get a chance to tell Martin Lawrence how grateful you are? I saw Martin three days ago, and I cried. I cried. He knows. That man know. He know what he did. He know what he did. I never gave him credit for it because he told me not to. Don't you ever tell nobody I did nothing for you. You did this. Good, bad, and ugly. You did it. And I tell that the young comedians, if I help you out, don't you ever tell nobody I did nothing for you, man. You did this, man. 
I ain't the guru of nothing. You did this, man. So when it go bad, motherfucker, don't blame me either. <laughs> you did this. You want it, you got it. Take care of it. Your opportunities. My opportunity knock, I never just let it in. I used to pull out my gun and say, get in the basement, motherfucker. <laughs> Opportunity is duct taped at my basement right now. He ain't never going nowhere. It's all good. You wanted I, it if you had it. Would, uh, let me ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> if you had it, would you want it? Yeah. If you had it, would you flaunt it? <laughs> well, it's yours. Uh, you know, we've done we've done a lot of these interviews, but there's only been one. Tracy Morgan. That was uh, one of the time. Got me emotional early in the morning. I don't like that. Beautiful. Beautiful people.